Better Call Saul has come to a close and we bid farewell to a universe that has been in our lives for the past 15 years. With a final season that saw us close off the story prior to Breaking Bad for Gus and Mike and us seeing Kim and Jimmy in the past, present and future, it certainly took us on a journey for the final time. The show closed off to a respectable response from fans and I for one agree with the final season and ending reception. So with that, I thought I'd share why the ending to Better Call Saul Season 6 was perfect. So let's get into it. Here is why the ending to Better Call Saul Season 6 was perfect. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. The ending to Better Call Saul came in Episode 13 of Season 6 and it was titled Saul Gone. This episode did a lot to complete the build-up from the final quarter of the season to ensure that the landing and closure was met. This video will address a few main points that I believe contributed to the ending's success and the reason why it was perfect. The closure for the characters, other than Jeff. Throughout the final quarter of Season 6, from Episode 9, it was the final time that we saw the four main characters in the show in the same timeline. This was Gus, Mike, Kim and Jimmy. This was two episodes after the mid-season finale, which at the time was the highest rated episode of Better Call Saul. The episode where we saw Howard Hamlin being killed by Lalo, and an episode that was an explosive one that took you on a ride. The pacing hadn't changed up until the end of episode 9, and it had been on a continual ride. However, episode 9 did have a sense of closure to it, despite not being the final episode of the show. Gus was meeting with Don Eladio, Mike was meeting with Nacho's father, and Kim and Jimmy had ended their relationship. For Gus and Mike, they got the appropriate closure that they needed prior to their entry points in Breaking Bad, especially with Gus when he met with Don Eladio where he was being exposed by Hector for his involvement in plotting against the cartel. He got away with it, and it was another moment that was similar in tone, delivery, and mood, like when we saw Hector kill Max in Breaking Bad. It felt like the tension was building and something could have definitely erupted. We even saw this referenced with Gus looking over the pool. Following this, we saw the drastic change in emotion on Gus, and the yearning to be happy and the want to let people be close to him. But he knew that this was something that would never be possible due to the damage that can be caused and the danger it could put upon them, showing the drastic difference between himself and Walter White. He knows the hurt that it can cause. The final shot that we had of him with him walking away from a moment of happiness spoke a thousand words, and it was the perfect way for it to be the last we saw of him in Better Call Saul. The shot with the fire in his eyes and the revenge that he would later get in Breaking Bad in that exact spot when meeting Don Eladio was the perfect place for Gus to have some of his final moments. Mike got another send-off in the show that was rather appropriate, Meeting with Nacho's father and him informing him that his son would never return whilst being told that justice would be served, yet the father calling it revenge was something that fitted it perfectly. We saw Mike questioning if he should even go and meet with him, but Mike is actually one of the more human characters despite assuming he's the least upon first glance. Justice and revenge can serve the same purpose, but it all depends on which side of the fence you're on, and this was symbolized in one of the final shots that we had of Mike, almost mirroring like what we saw with Kim and Jimmy at the end. Two different pathways. No matter how much Mike wanted to differentiate himself from the people that he was associated with, he was one of the gangsters and didn't fight for justice. He fought for a person and that was Gus. Jimmy and Kim's final moments were also perfect. Six years in the future, from beyond this point after witnessing them break up in episode 9, we saw Kim return to Albuquerque after seeing that she was living an extremely mundane life following the death of Howard Hamlin and her slight involvement in the sense that she witnessed it. We saw that she was living a life that was drastically different to how we'd seen her living throughout the entirety of season 6. She was living in a suburban neighborhood in Florida, working a 9 to 5 for a sprinkler company, and couldn't make a decision anymore. It was like she didn't know how to be the person that she was putting up a front as. Her re-meeting with Jimmy after going to Howard's wife in the court about everything that happened with Howard showed that she had a conscience and was finally prepared to face the repercussions if any were to go her way. We saw that she finally found peace upon all of Jimmy's confessions, and once she met with Jimmy in the prison after using her old bar card that didn't have an expiration date, it showed that she was prepared to break a rule in order to see him. Their relationship had been long gone, but there was still something there, and the flame between them certainly represented that. Her walking off wasn't a walk off into freedom, because I believe Kim's day could potentially come in the future, but for the time being, it was her going off to be the person that she used to be, working in a voluntary law firm and channeling the Kim that we all knew. 
Jimmy had the best closure that we could have asked for. Looking like he was going to channel his slip in Jimmy and Saul Goodman-esque persona in order to work his way down to a shorter sentence, which he did, he realized that he couldn't move forward and live a life that was built upon getting away with it again. He realized that by running away from everything that had happened in the past six years, and not getting rid of the character of Saul Goodman, and becoming Jimmy McGill again, he was only delaying the inevitable, and the scheming that found him when he was Gene Tarkovic would find him again in seven and a half years' time when he got out of prison. We saw him fess up, own his mistakes, give all of the information as possible, and took on an 86-year sentence for the price. We visibly saw emotion on his face, and the understanding that this was the first time that he'd re-entered these places in a long while was clear. Discussing the death of Howard whilst also talking about his regrets about what he did to his brother. Everything was coming out, regardless of if it even mattered. The cost in his mind was worth the reward, in being free in his mind and being able to be Jimmy McGill again. Like we saw when he asked the judge to refer to him as that. He's behind bars, he accepted the price, but he's not living too bad of a life, due to all of the helping that he did as a defense lawyer on the outside, so he has the respect inside. It was a fitting end to the character, especially with the camera panning around the corner and that being the last we saw of him. It was natural and it lingered in my mind, knowing that the character would still be out there, still living day to day, but inside of prison walls where he was unable to be the cunning con man and schemer that he lived his life as. The characters were all written out of the show in the most perfect, natural, and fitting way. Kim didn't need to die, nor did Jimmy, for a powerful ending to occur. They just needed to end up worse off than when they began, and that happening allowed them to feel the most human and real that they'd ever felt. I'll touch on Jeff briefly as well. There were a lot of questions around what happened to Jeff, but I think that's also the point. Jimmy still managed to ruin one other person's life in the short time that he re-entered that part of his life as Gene Talkovic. Jeff could wind up in jail, or he may not, but the fact that Jimmy managed to ruin somebody's life one final time is the thing that I felt mattered. Walter White and Jesse Pinkman's appearance There was a lot of anticipation around the reappearance of both Walter White and Jesse Pinkman, and how it would be incorporated into the show. And it was done in a way that I think was unexpected. Flashbacks but from the point of Saul and Kim in the era prior to Breaking Bad, other than the first one that we saw that was in the RV. Whilst these flashbacks were about Walt and Jesse appearing on screen in the universe again, it was more about the conversations that happened, the weight of them, and also the timing. When we take the scene of Walt, Jesse, and Saul in the RV, this wasn't really about anything that happened in the scene, but it was more about the placement of it in the current episode. We saw the RV scene take place just after Gene had done his first major scheme again in stealing the identity of an individual. This was the first major thing that he'd done since his Saul Goodman days, a life that he needed to leave behind in order to stay safe and out of the authorities' eye. The RV scene was more of a symbol. It symbolized the beginning of the end for Jimmy again, this scene was the first time that he got involved with Walter White and it was the start of the downward spiral for Saul as we knew it. And this coming directly after Gene's scheming meant that the same thing was going to happen again. The second appearance of Kim with Jesse was more about the conversation that was had. It was at the time of Jimmy and Kim signing the divorce papers and was focused on if Saul was a good person. Jesse asked Kim, is he good? In the context of the conversation, it was about if he was a good lawyer. But on a deeper level, it was about if he was a good person. With Kim answering, he was when I knew him. It showed that she didn't recognize the individual that had been in front of her for the past 10 minutes, and supported the idea that he wasn't a good person anymore. And the final flashback of Waltz and Saul, where it focused on regrets, was an interesting one as well, and supported what we saw unfold in the finale of the show. It was the second flashback that we'd seen in that episode that was focused on regrets, and facing them head on. But just like before when he was with Mike, Jimmy wasn't prepared to do so despite having it all weighing on his mind and not being ready or prepared to share it. We saw him mention a slip and fall that went wrong when he was younger, which led him to damaging his knee. We saw Walt stand up and say, so you've always been like this, showing that he'd always been the person that was sat in front of him. We saw Jimmy sitting there and thinking about the response that he had, and I think it could have been taken in two ways. One, in the sense that at the time, it genuinely could have been one of the only regrets that he had. But also, it could have shown that he still wasn't prepared to face the regrets that he had in his mind that had been burning inside of him since we first saw it addressed in the timeline of Season 5 where he was sat with Mike. So it had been playing on his mind for some time, showing us that he hadn't always been like this, like Walter had stated. There was something within him, but he just wasn't prepared to share. 
These appearances added weight to the final season, allowed the connection to Breaking Bad to play into Better Call Saul, and further supported the story and conclusion of some of the characters, the element of a full circle now being complete. Within the show's finale, there were many moments that paid homage to the show in the sense that it was filled with shots that bore a resemblance to shots that we'd seen throughout the season and the entirety of the show, such as Jimmy being walked down the hallway into the courtroom, the iconic firing of the fingers at the end, the buzzing with the shot that was next to the exit sign in the courtroom, but the most important one most certainly had to be the final one that we had of Jimmy and Kim being in prison together, mirroring the early parts of the meeting back in season one of the show. However, the light shining into the room was pointing in a different direction, both symbolizing the beginning of the story and the end of one. There were other new shots that were extremely powerful as well, such as the one of both Jimmy and Kim being on opposite sides of the fence with what looked like miles of space between them, despite only being a few meters, Jimmy having a snow-filled slope against him, and Kim having steps up to freedom, showing the harsh reality of what had now happened. Also, the use of color in the final season as well. The only time we saw color in the Gene timeline was when he was caught and his previous life as Saul was being shown to him in the form of one of his commercials, and also the flame being emitted between Jimmy and Kim. The fact it was barely used, but only at points that mattered, was important and showed that the days of color and life were behind him. The ending to Better Call Saul was an emotional ride that was filled with moments that proved why the show was so great. It was natural, had a sense of realism and elements of closure while still leaving the character of Jimmy McGill out there in the world. And instead of killing him off and allowing him to be somebody that sits in the back of your mind and you think, yeah, he was killed. The keeping him alive but inside of a prison cell allows you to feel as though the character is still out there. And when you think about it, it has a slightly different feeling. So, there you have it. Why the ending to Better Call Saul Season 6 was perfect. If you want to see more videos on Better Call Saul such as Endings Explained, Theories and Predictions, and Character Breakdowns, then click on the i button. Or alternatively, you can head over to my channel where you'll find them all. If you want to give me a show or movie that you'd like me to review next, then head over to my Twitter, at BrainPilot underscore, and tweet me what show or movie you'd like me to review. And finally, if you'd like to see what I rate the latest movies that don't quite make the cut to getting a dedicated video, then head over to my Letterboxd profile. It's where I rate the latest releases in real time. What did you think of the ending of Better Call Saul? Leave a comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.